what is bump steer and why you probably don't have it. I mean, you could. You probably don't. I mean, you could. We'll talk about it. So we probably think if my Jeep's broke, it's broke. What's it matter to know all the terminology, know under, understand how this stuff works? Well, even if you're not gonna fix it yourself, knowing the terminology is definitely gonna be beneficial to you. So if you explain it to someone, it's gonna save them time. Anything that saves you time, or saves them time for that matter, saves you money, and that's always good. So bump steer. We get this thrown a lot, around a lot is bump steer, bump steer, bump. You, you got bump steer, you got that, like, and bump steer is a lot different from death wobble. So bump steer is fundamentally a problem in the suspension, whereas death wobble, it's a fundamental problem in the suspension, but death wobble is, is what happens after that problem, if it makes sense. So if we have a <clears throat> suspension that's fundamentally not set up right, the geometry's off, it could cause death wobble while all, it also could cause bump steer. So if the way we look at it is that the, the sickness is the geometry and me coughing while I'm, I'm coughing, yep, that's death wobble. While I'm sneezing, that's bump steer, or I have a headache, that's bump steer. They're, they're two different you know, symptoms of different, of, they could be caused by the same thing, but more than likely not. So what bump steer is gonna feel like is it's pretty much the way the word sounds, is when you hit a bump and you're driving down the road, as that suspension comes up and you, and you feel it come through the body, the wheel jerks. But it'll go right back for the most part. It's just gonna be and you're gonna feel it right in the steering wheel every time you hit a bump. Now, the, a stock vehicle in stock configuration, the way any vehicle, is when you bought it from the factory, it should not have bump steer in it because the stock suspension is designed to not have bump steer. Now, loose components can cause that. So that's one thing we check out one of our other videos, check over where I wanna check out the tie rod ends, the ball joints, the, the wheel bearings, all our components to make sure that everything is tight. Next, then we start talking about the, the geometry of the the steering and the suspension if it's been modified. In order to understand bump steer, we're gonna to have to understand the way the front uh, steering and suspension works in the Jeep. So looking at the Jeep from the front, we're gonna have a track bar that goes from the frame down to the axle. What the track bar is gonna do is centers the axle under the vehicle. Now with an adjustable track bar, we can move this and we can move this axle side to side and that's gonna hold the axle right there. Now as the suspension moves up and down, it's gonna pivot on the frame because the axle can move with the suspension, but the frame side can't. So this is gonna work on an arc. As it comes down, it's gonna pivot right there and swing. Now, your drag link is gonna go from the steering gearbox, which is also hooked to the frame, up to the steering wheel inside the vehicle where you're gonna feel it up here. This is gonna take the drag link all the way over to the knuckle. Now, when you turn the wheel at the knuckle, it's forcing that to move side to side. Your, tra your tie rod is gonna be coming right across here and, it move and the tie rod links both tires together, so they turn together. Now, as this suspension cycles, both of these points become the pivot point. As the suspension moves up and down and it moves on the same arc, all we're worried about is where they mount. We're not worried about what shape they are, if that makes sense. So this can have a bend in it to go up over the axle, or we can have something right here. We can have any that we're worried about where they mount. And then they work on the same pivot. So they're gonna have to be parallel. We could take a piece of string and hook from this hole to this hole and this hole to this hole and uh, put a, you know, a dre uh, digital degree wheel on it, make sure they're the same, as close as we can get them to avoid bump steer. If they become different and they work on different planes and different angles, they're gonna pivot differently. So as the, that suspension moves up, it's gonna put force into the steering wheel and you hit that bump, you're gonna feel thump, thump every single time. Now, I'll show you some pictures of what a bad setup would look like and how we would uh, address that. Okay, let's say we did a flip kit on a JK or a JL or anything like that, we took the drag link 
and we, we lifted it up, we're above three and a half inches or so, so we start getting a pretty good angle on that drag length, and we think, hey, let's flip it up, and then we can flatten out that drag length, we're gonna have a little bit more down travel, it's not gonna bind, and also, um, the steering characteristics will be a little bit better. Well, once we took that from being down here, we flipped it up on top, great, okay? We need to address the track bar, and we're gonna have to raise that in parallel, because right here, our angles are different, and if, as, as you can understand, they're gonna pivot over here. This arc is gonna be different from that arc. And as, as that suspension moves, you're gonna feel it through the steering wheel. As that suspension comes up or even goes down, it's gonna move right there. So if they can stay and pivot the same, they're gonna move through the steering wheel the same and you won't feel that force coming up through there. So as you can understand in stock form, these angles are already predetermined for you. There's no real adjustment to them or anything like that. Once we start changing things, then obviously we can we can absolutely address those issues that might arise or we can make it better. But in stock form, you won't get bump steer and unless you have a component that's loose. But like I say, those mounting points, those are all predetermined. Those, those aren't adjustable or anything like that in stock form. So if we did like a drag length flip kit, Obviously, we're going to have to raise the track bar up to match that angle. Now, if we're building custom suspensions, a lot of times we're going to want to um, run a bracket that's going to have two or three different angle or locations in it so we can dial it in, we can work at different ride heights, we can do all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but in stock form, in completely stock form, you really shouldn't be getting bump steer because it's, for the most part, it's not even an option unless a component is loose. And then we can obviously address that. Sometimes it's causing a death wobble, but it's really crucial to understand when we're using these terms that they're different. So it's like saying a sneeze or a cough. Well, those are different things or even a headache or a cough. It, it, there's, yes, we're sick, but we need to know what the condition is because then we can go to the diagnosis.